nice trapper's trail. I'll show you what his traps look like. Well, I've been wasting a lot of energy for nothing around here. <laughs> I tried to look around. But it doesn't always work. So he has one Martin trap over here. Or if he puts it on the ground by the creek, it will be a, a mink trap. So there it is. There's his box. It has slits in it so that he can put the uh, these ends through through it once it's loaded and it'll hold until this here will go inside here and then when the animal goes through well, that's supposed to be up in the level there but it keeps fine there it is and when the animal goes through it, he hits that, and then that there is held on by this little vice here. Ah! Little the vice there. And when they hit that wire, they'll spring that. So that could be in front of the bait as they go into the box. Or I've actually put sardines on these things and let this thing hang on two sticks with crutches, crutches like that. Two sticks set in the ground. So that these, of course when the trap's set, it's turned the other way. Then that would be open and ready to slam shut on them. But, uh, so these circles would sit right on the top of uh, two fork sticks, one on each side. And the bait would be in the center, and when they jump up to grab the bait, like with me, when the uh, mink jumps up to grab the bait, uh, he triggers it and gets caught in between those jaws. And uh, this you don't have to have in a box because the snow doesn't collect on it very easily. You just have to have it about a foot above the snow. And make sure you adjust your sticks every so often so it keeps it up that high. Oh, that's a, called a koala bear trap. There's bucks. He's got another one over here. We're ready to go hanging off this tree. There's his box, his trap. He's got this humongous box over here, which is for bigger animals. Bigger animals trying to steal his, his bait or whatever. He's got this great big box here. That's for the big, great big uh, conger traps. I'll catch lynx, wolf, coyote, and wolverine, that thing. Okay, so the way I used to set them was like this. Two st sticks as crutches. The chain and wire I'd tie to a, a log or tree branch or something. And then those forks I'd have them closer together so I could slide some meat up there. Or with mink I used to use sardines. They smell all the time and they, and they don't uh, freeze very good. So the little fella would be hopping along and see that and then either go up to eat it or jump at it and, and he'd be caught. Now 
I just found something else to pinch me really good about these traps. I can't remember them from when I used them, if they had that or not. The big ones did, but the small ones didn't seem to. I thought these were recalled traps, but, but uh, on, the, on this one here, that little clamp there, hinge there, those uh, you take off. There's one on each spring. See? And when that's unclipped, it's uh, one side it's tight so it doesn't come off the other side, just comes off that right side there. But when they're unclipped and it's loaded, watch out. <laughs> just about break your wrist with this thing. That's what they're designed to do. Quick kill. Mercy, no foothold. So, so that's uh, trapping, and I think I call them koala bear traps <laughs> in that other video, but this is called a kona bear trap. Why they're called that, I don't know. But uh, yeah, very, very good traps. Quite deadly, do their job, and they're easy to stir. Easy to uh, to set up in that. Uh, the big ones, big beaver ones, used to have a clip like that, and you had a a ring with a rope that uh, you could draw these two parts of the spring together real tight, and then you'd put that safety clip on to hold them while you set the trap where you wanted, and then you undid the rope in that ring and. Uh, trap was set. If those beaver ones ever let go, oh man, break your arm in two places easy if you had your arm in there. So they are really powerful. All right, enough of trapping 101.